Yes, me? Thank you. Hi, my name's Paul. Uh, I live right down the street, so um, so I came tonight. Uh, I would like to uh, play a song. The song is by Richard Thompson. Richard Thompson was in a band called Fairport Convention in the 70s. And he's, uh, wow, he's a good songwriter. Um, I am playing that this song by Richard Thompson called 1952, Vincent Black Lightning, um, but in an arrangement that I concocted after hearing um, a vocalist named Malik Arjun Mansour performing a raga entitled Shukla Bilabu. Um, I know we're going to be uh, probably venturing pretty far afield harmonically this evening, so I thought I would start with um, uh, the just intonation version of the Ionian mode. Um, 1952 Vincent Black Lightning by Richard Thompson. Mm-hmm. 
Sestina, uh, more or less. I gave myself the liberty. A Sestina is a French form, originally a French form. It has a, uh, an introductory two lines, which you'll hear over and over again. Uh, also, the end words are supposed to be the same. Six end words on six lines. There's six sestats, six groups of six lines. And uh, I gave myself the liberty of not using the same words every time, but they do rhyme. Like, as if they were the same. And it's called No. <coughs> no, no clarion in the throat. It's called No Ease. No Ease, 
for long yet vehement pleas have been my friends and even strangers' ends, to name the effect and cause, the punishment and sin do me and my de Jesus life. I grin and lose, or win and beat them at their own game. No ease for long, yet vehement pleas have been my shining armor, holding every outward in and them at bay. For each day while I blame the effect and cause, the punishment and sin lose tread. One time, trying to save my skin, I gave in, prayed, and burnt with only shame, no ease. For long yet vehement pleas have been proved dead. Trade pleas for griefs, the oven of hell and heaven's love are just the same. The effect and cause, the punishment and sin that darkens words in those who've sworn to ruin all worldly peace. From all their blessings came no ease. For long yet vehement pleas have been the effect and cause, the punishment and sin.
didn't work out too well. Either go on the next person or I can try that again. Whatever. It's really interesting. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you kill the loop? Huh? Mm -hmm. Is the loop erased already? Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, really, I thought that was terrible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's fixed a bit. I guess. Well, it we should be. Piece and came back. Huh? What if we did another piece and came back? That'll be fine. Jacob and I are going to do something 17 anyway, so.
So I've never been in a room with this many microphone guitars. They're just kind of like in the corners. Uh, and that's really special. Really special about that. This particular one, um, play two. Just throw another number in there. Um, I played this song before, but not too recently, so some of you might recognize it. Um, about that. Here it is. <coughs> With a bucket of roses I've crossed seven bridges I don't remember choosing these things Sunshine Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Tuesday night, uh, we had a meet and greet, and um, we kind of threw some things on the board as to what people were interested in doing. And one of the things was microtonal wire singing, and one of the other things was exploring this tuning called 88 cent equal temperament. And so we combined them, and we had had two meetings so far of an 88 cent choir. Um, what 88 cent means is that there's this particular interval that's stacked, it's a little bit smaller than a half step, but not extremely small. And where you would usually get to an octave, there isn't one. It actually, there's one that's below it, one that's above it, and kind of misses it. So it's like the, one of the Wendy Carlos equal but non octave scales? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. exactly. Um, They're all equal divisions of the third. Mm -hmm. Alameda, Gamma, and 88. This is the perfect fifth divided into eight parts. Uh -huh. Ordinarily, it's divided into seven, so I think there's a bunch of different. And what's this called? It's this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's called uh, the worst the, worst the lyrics. Um, you guys have this is the first well, slide. This, this, is, this is a thing we tried I, uh, uh, today. I, I, can't, I can't breathe? Don't you think?
going to do what everyone's doing. That's my tongue is hard. This is a work in progress. The text has been written by a certain Troy Subin. To my specifications, such as they are. Um, Do you the marker? We do. Yeah. I thought we know that. The, so you got a race marker. This is maybe destined to be a some kind of opera or some music video. Only I can see how many would tell. I'm going to do just. Um, I'm going to do just kind of a sampling of how I think this is going to go. It's a lot of prose, and then it's a chorus, and there's, that happens three times, so I'm just going to do the first one. I've never done this before. Elaine is sitting on the couch watching cartoons, along with the cat and the mouse, and they're running around a huge room trying to kill each other. Just when the cat's about to murder the mouse with a shotgun, Elaine, turn it out off. It's time for school. No, Mom, Elaine says, acting like her big sister Val. But Val's never around anymore. No one really knows where she's at, and it's unusual to see her around the house alone. She's usually got one of those bunkheads with her. That's what Elaine calls these guys always hanging around Val. Bunkheads. Because they just bring trouble. As the thoughts say in her small skull planted there by her parents, they just bring trouble. Elaine has come to think of her sister as the one who brings trouble. And she shouldn't act like that. Nope, not at all. But where is Val? And it's not fair that she's not around. And nobody says anything about it. Just at that moment. Where have you been, Val? Elaine's Val's father, Clark, says. And, of course, trailing behind Val is a bunkhead. The guy's got a shaved head, a bomber jacket, ripped holes in his jeans where the brown kneecaps are. He smiles, and the house smells like a flash flood of smoke. Ew, Elaine says, while watching the cat blow off the mouse's head with a shotgun. Elaine, it's time for school, now turn that thing off. No, Elaine says. Don't make me get over there and have to spank you. Now come on, her mother Dolores, near shouting. Elaine turns off the TV, smiles at Val and her bunkhead friend. Soon Elaine's in the back seat, headed for school. Val gets to do everything, stay out late with her bunkhead friends, and doing grown-up stuff. That's not fair, I'm gonna do grown-up stuff too. I don't like sitting around waiting for her to come around. Like in the old days, we'd play with dolls and she'd dress me up like a princess and we'd run around the neighborhood with squirt guns killing all the boys. It's not fair that she doesn't get spanking anymore. She doesn't even like watching cartoons with me anymore. We used to watch that cartoon all the time, The Cat and the Mouse. Like the time when the cat tricked the mouse to hang itself by accident. Oh, we laughed and laughed. And Val said, you thought the mouse would have been smarter than that. And I said, yeah, those Miss Pecker were teaching math. And we'd both end up cracking up. I miss those days. Now, it's time for me, waiting for her, to return home. But when she comes, she smells like smoke, and her bunkhead friends smell too. I hate it. It's not fair. Ew, Elaine says. What's the matter, honey? I just can't take the smell of Val and her bunkheaded friends, Elaine says. I know, honey. It's not fair. Why does she always get to stay out late? And she never gets spanking. I don't get to see her anymore. And Elaine cries. I know, honey. We're working on it. Oh, baby, don't cry. It's okay. We're trying to get Val. It's not fair. I want to go out. And I want Val to hang around more. Elaine cries some more. I know, honey, I know. We're almost at school, so dry those tears. Here we go. Dolores pulls in front of the school, looks at Elaine. Elaine injects the seatbelt, leans in, gives her mother a kiss. Now look at me. Be a good girl. Dry those tears. And when I come to pick you up, we'll meet Daddy for your favorite food. Okay, but do you think Val will come? I hope she comes. Please tell her I want her to come. It's not fair. She always gets to be out. It's not fair, Elaine says, and bursts into tears again. I know, honey. Now be a good girl. I'll pick you up after school. Elaine quickly dries her tears, gives Dolores a kiss, heads off to school. While Miss Peckerwood rambles on about math, Elaine can't help think how unfair it all is. How Val never shows up for dinner anymore, and her stupid bunkheads with that stupid smell. It's not fair! She can come and go when she pleases, and she doesn't get spanked anymore, and we used to watch shows together. She doesn't with my homework! It's not fair! I want to be with Val more. She doesn't ever listen to what anybody says. Why do I? Why do I have to listen to what anybody says? I want to be free, like Val. But without all those bunkheads and that smell, if Val doesn't have to listen, I don't have to listen. 
It's not fair that she gets to... Watching cartoons, news, the shotgun. Watching cartoons, news, the shotgun. Television loads the light now. Math, the bullets, not in fair air. Cheesy noodles tie the small walk. Miles, this breathing noose that hair ends. Taught the smell to dangle, wait here.
Hi, I attended one of the microtonal classes, and I was listening to the music, and it sort of reminded me um, of this strange moment that no one really talks about, that I think about sometimes, and that's the moment that would happen before a post-apocalyptic world, but after the apocalypse, and that strange like edge in between those two states. Um, and so I wrote this. My eyes are drooping, solid stones of broken sleep, timelines of some distant backhanded habit. I am the bandit, the wound goes unfed, and I can feel this mask slipping down my whitewashed <coughs> cheeks. Again, I wait, and the hate of the bandit for the girl can go unsaid no longer. A dispensable evil, they say, for the necessary, sweet mobility. Supposed to drink tea, you see, wrong again. I am late. My intestines dance on the hardwood floor during Thanksgiving dinner, but my eyes remain fixed, for their broken bellies were sewn up long ago, or perhaps just last winter. Halloween, I guess. Several chipped fingernails, no polish, two chapped lips kiss sore, bruises up and down the spine of a non-bleeder. The tenderness, purple ruin between the legs of some artist, a creative, a queer. Don't shave, for the girl worships the beard more than most, an entity, animal or otherwise. Bandits are less than wolves. My oh my, for my snarls are mostly silent. 
but a bandit I remain dissatisfied. Ain't got, ain't got no grace, ain't got no malleable mouth, but the sea, oh the sea, string me up and sink me, the lowly thief. I long for that treasure of a microtonal measure, and that just might be my biggest blunder to date. I forge, I scramble, and now to bask in the cruel sunlight of days gone by, remember, I chose none of this. Again, drowning, the open air tastes bitter, a sordid sample of the not yet stale, with my noise a shattering, anti-nothing equals anti-everything, my tongue composes architecture, up chuck, down chuck, I suppress, oppress my organs, thread my way through the silky back door of a pristine marble entity. I know no one here on this glittering precipice, white, weathered slaughter. The falcons, with their glory and apple pie, have fallen, toppled from the tops of hideous trees who could never be convinced to donate even half their bounty to respectable relief efforts. The worms are more patient than most, but unwilling, as always, I spit the soil from my bloated cheeks, pour the earth for me. P.S. Whiskey makes for a cheery affair, and oh, that sickly sweet indulgence itch, of which I may itch far too often. I am hungry and insatiable, or perhaps just plain tired, yet I remain, sustained, choking on the foggy landscape with nowhere to lie down, drowning in a mist of uncertainty and blueberry scones. I've forgotten everything, it seems, and got no grace on me.